G'day and welcome to Sumo's Projects and welcome to this week's uh, build. Uh, in this project I'm making a remote control holder using uh, some leftover elm slab which I had in my uh, timber rack and um, it's a nice wood to work with. It's, it's, it's a little bit like, uh, it can be a bit tough, a bit sinewy but um, the end result it comes up terrific. So this is a good little project you can do. It's a sort of a custom job for any type of uh, apparatus that you may want uh, out of harm's way or, or being in the way of some potential damage uh, which can occur. So stick around, have a look at the build um, and please leave a comment and uh, all the other stuff. But before we have the build, I'd love it if you could do this. This is the uh, second project I've used English Elm in, and um, as I may mention, it, it, it is a, it's a rather peculiar uh, type of wood because whilst it, um, it machines okay, it, it tends to, uh, I don't know, have that sort of rip going against the grain every time you make a cut, so um, for that part it, it's probably best suited for, um, you know, things like tabletops and stuff like that. But if, you, if you're patient and you can work it slowly, it, it is a rather nice wood to um, make most things from. So first thing here, I, um, I cut a section out, which was enough for this project, and I took that over to the bandsaw and roughly cut it down and then uh, squaring it up on my squaring up jig here. When I was taking passes over the jointer and, and even here through the thickness planer, um, I took very, very uh, shallow cuts, small cuts, and that was to help prevent. It was sort of, it feels like it's gripping on you every time it goes through a machine, but so it's, it's a patient thing. Um, what I'm doing here, I'm just, I've cut two sides and the, the back part as well. I've got a very uh, strong rare earth magnet and this will be uh, drilled into the backing assembly as you'll see later on. So just machining up uh, a few of the components at this stage. I absolutely love doing projects where it, it, it's more of a visual um, and you've got to like this uh, remote control and you're not working off plans because when you work off plans you, you tend to be so specific to reaching targets of sizes and cuts and you know and sometimes that can drive you crazy so this is a bit of a free-flowing sort of project uh, you mark it out you position something and uh, you go from there In hindsight, I, I probably uh, went a little bit over the top with the backing thickness, the material. Uh, that was close to probably, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, a bit bigger. Um, I'm using this Dowlmax Dowling jig to attach the sides now uh, to the base and um, I've barely just learning and uh, how to use this jig. It's, it's absolutely so accurate and um, to me, it's, it's something that 
you know, if if it was uh, at a price range where everyone could sort of just go and get it, I, I'd recommend it. But it's they are a little bit dearer. I, I was given this by um, by uh, Lewis up in Sydney, and uh, I'm absolutely loving it at this stage. So all, all throughout this uh, build, I, I keep placing this in, in within the uh, this little holder just to make sure I've got the right sizes. It's got a little bit of wiggle room. Um, now just tidying up all the faces after the glue up and uh, anything that wasn't flush will be flush after doing this. So I've stopped the belt sander and this is good for little components to, you know, just rub out any marks and things like that. So. Back over to the router table, love this table, it's, um, it just makes life so good when you can just walk over and put a chamfer or a round over. A little bit of light sanding and um, that's ready for the next stage. Who said you can't put a square piece into a round hole? I'm proving this wrong here. Um, I didn't have any dowel of the size and I didn't have any glue to uh, put the magnet and keep it in position so I, I just wedged that little part in and I'll, I'll try to look for a bit of glue during the week and fix that up but um, also here cutting, these are just the little panels I'm going to glue on and attach one at the bottom that's glued on and as you'll see the one at the top, oh hang on, we've got a bit of a problem here, the old uh, glue bottle is a bit clogged, yes as I was saying yeah, so the top part will be uh, screwed in and it'll be like a hinge type setup as you'll see. I'm pre-drilling the hole uh, for this and then also cutting out the little slot on one side as you see there. So as you can see, this will pivot on uh, one screw, which is a fixed screw, but not put in too tight, so it can still uh, rotate. Um, always pre-drill, especially in the hardwoods. It's, uh, I've seen, I've actually done it first hand where I've split wood in the past and I'm not making that mistake again. Uh, so here we go. This is what we end up with. And it should be pretty pretty secure in there. So a little bit of a light sand and then we go over and put our final finish onto it.